Good morning to everybody who's uh, joined us. Uh, I'll start with a small introduction to myself and uh, then I would like uh, everybody to introduce themselves also and uh, to make it more fun and uh, morning like. Let's uh, say everybody what we had for breakfast today. Well, uh, my name is uh, Markus Bern and I'm uh, a former student of uh, Tartu Kahaka. Now I'm a teacher and I've uh, spent a lot of time uh, cooking in kitchens, uh, kitchens, being a chef and uh, traveling a lot uh, around the world. And uh, for uh, breakfast today, I had an uh, omelette with cheese and a uh, yogurt. Sirli, would you like to go next? No, certainly. Okay. Trin, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Trin. Oh, you can hear. Now we can hear. Okay. Do I talk or? Yeah, you can Trin go uh, oh. talk about who you are, uh, where you're from, and. I'm Trin. I'm from Estonia. I study in Kahaka and I I just uh, woke up. So I haven't eaten any, anything. Then looking forward to lunch then, yes. Then uh, Andra, you can go next. Andra, can you hear me? Okay. Shirley, would you uh, go then? Nothing. Again, would you like to say anything? Hello. Hello. Morning. Uh, Jana, would you like to say something? Yes, hello, Jeff Teacher from Finland, and uh, I had a coffee with milk for breakfast, and I'm waiting for lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> Mart, would you like to say something? I haven't uh, eat back breakfast for a while, about a week. I don't eat in the morning. Okay, so Estonians don't eat usually breakfast. Okay. Uh, Nior, would you like to say something? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am back. Actually, I was uh, sick. I was uh, affected with Corona, okay. but I am fighting and I win. <laughs> and now I am joining. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm very, I, I was waiting to when I'm going to join and I'm very interested about this uh, conversation today. Okay. Thank you. Good to hear you're doing well now. Yeah. Una, would you like to say something? No. Okay. Rob. Nothing. Sigrid, would you like to say something? Yeah, it, it takes uh, a while to get the microphones on. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am having my second coffee. <laughs> Uh, so uh, joining the Estonian team that does not uh, have a lot of breakfast uh, usually yes. usually uh, around this time is the coffee break in school. So uh, working from home and missing the nice buns from the bakery that we are used to having in the schoolhouse. So. Yeah. Let's uh, 
would uh, Sombit like to say something? Hi, everyone. Hi. Nice to see you all. And uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for Ona. Last week was posting on the Facebook that how I can uh, post my uh, uh, my uh, blog page into the main blog, and I made it. Yes, thank you very much for showing that. Good, good. Thank you. Of course. <clears throat> so, if I missed somebody, sorry. Uh, but uh, I think now is a good time to start with the presentation. I'll quickly share my screen here. Can everybody see the screen now? Yes. Okay, I had uh, put together a small uh, timetable. I'm not sure if we can uh, really go at the same pace or uh, there should be maybe no hiccups, but let's try our best. So I'll try to introduce the subject to you uh, now. Um, basically, plant-based diets are uh, coming more of a trend than ever. It's uh, starting to go uh, from uh, a few people that uh, like eating plants to uh, a real like uh, trend that uh, people are taking more and more initiative in and they're uh, concerned about the environment and everything that uh, has to relate to that. So I'll start with the Tinklink, first uh, chapter. It's uh, here. It's our uh, school in Bullo, actually, that uh, we have put here in the picture. There's uh, been a small update to the kitchen to make it more modern and more uh, more uh, functional. I'll start with the first presentation. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> what is plant-based diet and how it's related to vegetarian diets? Plant-based diet means uh, prioritizing plant foods Plant-based doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you only eat plant exclusively. It, um, you may eat uh, meat also. You just take a priority in putting more pressure uh, on yourself to think more on your diet as a plant-based. <clears throat> Types of uh, plant-based and uh, vegetarian diets. Most known are vegetarians and vegans. That's the most common nowadays. But uh, since uh, it's coming a bigger trend, it's uh, more people are starting to eat uh, what they like, and then it's growing more and more and more. At the moment, there are overall seven different uh, dietary restrictions that people uh, are looking at as the main and I'm going to talk to you about the seven today at the moment. <clears throat> so the basic is vegan. They do not consume uh, any animal products or byproducts, eggs and dairy with uh, honey and or bivax, including that gelatin and any other animal byproducts, ingredients or products are no to them. Animal uh, products such as silk and leather and wool are also uh, not accept acceptable to them. So next slide. Lacto vegetarians do not eat red or white meat, fish, fowl or eggs. They do eat vegetables, fruits and nuts foods of plant origin, dairy products, such as cheese, milk, and yogurt. Of course, vegans and lacto-vegetarians eat also uh, oats and uh, beans and that sort of stuff, but uh, I've not added it to this presentation. I'll talk to that and about that in the next lecture. Oh, vegetarians. Do not eat red or white meat, fish, fowl or dairy products. 
they do consume egg products that contain eggs. So basically every sort of egg product like uh, bison, uh, chicken, that sort of eggs. Lacto ovo vegetarians are one of the most popular and traditional forms of vegetarians. They do not consume red meat, white meat, fish or fowl. Do consume, however, dairy products and egg products. Pescatarians, pescatarians choose to eat mostly plant-based diet, but who also incorporate seafood as a source of protein, do not consume red meat, white meat or fowl. Do it, dairy and eggs. Next slide. For vegetarian, this diet uh, restriction means consuming the poultry and fowl only. And this is not officially considered a vegetarian uh, like form. Do not consume usually red meat or fish and seafood. Do eat multiple forms of poultry like turkey and chicken may or may not choose to incorporate seafood, eggs and dairy into their diets. And next slide. Flexitarians, aka semi-vegetarians, they do their best to limit meat intake as much as possible and they have an almost entirely plant-based diet. A flexitarian diet is a plant-based meaning plants, food, they certain stage but allows to incorporate meat and other animal products. If at any point anybody has a question feel free to ask. It's my first time presentation, uh, presentationing uh, uh, this sort of thing. In uh, making your menus for the pop-up event Please take care of uh, looking for these special uh, things in your menu since uh, vegans and uh, need also protein since uh, a lot of protein comes from uh, tofu and that sort of stuff which I will talk about in the next uh, presentation is uh, in, in, in essential for uh, your menu. Also iron calcium, omega-3 fat acids, and vitamin D. Does anybody have any questions? I hope everybody can still hear me and see me. I hope I haven't lost you yet. No, okay. <coughs> so, Let's move on. I put together a small slideshow here. Can everybody see this? Yes. Uh, here are the partners for cooking for the future. Here are some uh, substitutes for uh, your menu. If you're feeling uh, any doubts about uh, your menu or the vegetarian or plant-based uh, form, you can ask me at any point and I'll certainly answer the questions you have and try to help you overcome your like um, ingredients because the most um, biggest part of uh, making your uh, vegetarian or plant-based diet is the ingredients and the lack of uh, there are since uh, many forms of uh, eggs can't uh, really uh, be substitute so I put aquafaba here because it's uh, like egg whites you can make a foam out of them like uh, making a mousse, meringues, sponges, even uh, making any dessert you would like with the uh, egg foam, basically. It is uh, the water of chickpeas, sorry. Uh, chickpeas and uh, mostly common used as uh, egg substitute. So it's uh, 
really popular at the moment. But you can make your own aquafaba by soaking chickpeas in water overnight and uh, draining the chickpeas and uh, rinsing them, then uh, cooking them in uh, covered water until they're soft. And the liquid you get from uh, that is the aquafaba liquid you can use to make anything uh, that I mentioned here, like mousses, meringues, sponges, desserts. <coughs> Next slide. Seitan. It's uh, a form of uh, meat substitute for uh, many. Uh, it's uh, from China. It's uh, basically uh, flour and yeast put together with uh, a small amount of liquid and uh, seasoning. You can um, rinse, uh, you should rinse your uh, dough after you've combined everything uh, until the water is clear and then you uh, bring a pot of water or a stock uh, to boil and you boil the seitan uh, in the water and then it makes like this uh, foamy chicken texture that you can use in any dish you like for a substitute of meat. <clears throat> Next slide. Of course, there are a lot of store uh, selections that you can substitute because uh, nowadays there's a growing trend and uh, a lot of stores and products have been uh, placed in uh, mass product and you can buy them on shelf. So, milk substitutes. Most popular milk substitutes are at the moment oats, hazelnut, rice, cashew, soy and almonds. Of course you can make your own milk by uh, letting any of your preferred nuts or uh, soak overnight and then blending them. Of course you should remember to boil the mass afterwards or it will go sour because the bacteria in the nuts will uh, affect the milk and it will go sour pretty quickly, probably in three days. Also, in Estonia it's really popular to have oat and hazelnut and uh, even uh, almond foams out of, uh, made out of the nuts. So you can substitute that for whipping cream or making uh, desserts like uh, uh, how do you say in uh, English, Vastla uh, Kuklid in Estonia? I know there's also in Finnish really popular their bread with foam. Next slide. Cheese. There are some good ways to make your own cheese. You can uh, make cheese out of nuts, aquafaba, and coconuts. I'll try to bring uh, some examples. For example, Making cashew uh, cheese is uh, simple. You uh, put the uh, cashews in uh, water, let them soak, season them how you like, and then blending the mixture uh, until you have a smooth texture. Uh, then you add your favorite seasoning. Uh, maybe you want to put a little bit of crunch, then you can add uh, sea seeds or whatever seeds you like, or even make it uh, sweet. And then uh, just uh, let it uh, put it in the fridge refrigerator and let it cool until the mass comes solid. Uh, Aquafaba is a great source of uh, making cheese because uh, it's uh, really good texture and you can make uh, mozzarella out of it by uh, whipping uh, aquafaba till it's foamy, then adding a little bit uh, of uh, stock, your favorite stock, maybe a carrot or uh, any uh, other vegetable you like adding a little bit agar agar to it to make it uh, solid and uh, letting it uh, boil about uh, three minutes and then letting it cool down. Coconuts are uh, great uh, because they have a lot of fats in them, so they're a good substitute for uh, fatty cheeses. You can uh, make uh, coconut milk uh, with some uh, yeast um, and then uh, put it into a container and let it uh, cool down. And that's the most easy uh, a way to make cheese. There's also a good selection of vegan cheeses on the market, of course. Uh, <clears throat> and next slide. 
what is tofu? Tofu is from China. Tofu is made from uh, soybeans and it's a great substitute for meat since it's full of protein. So remember, if you're putting together your uh, menu for the pop-up event, to use uh, to think about the dietary needs of uh, vegans and vegetarians and uh, try to incorporate the foods that uh, are also grown locally because the biggest uh, takeaway from this is uh, you should incorporate foods that are local that give you a good protein uh, efficiency like uh, carrots and uh, peas and uh, lentils and uh, whatever local to you specifically and use that in the dish instead of trying to outsource uh, some sort of meat or uh, some sort of uh, vegetarian option everything can make may be locally Tempeh is from uh, Indonesia. Tempeh is made out of soaked and uh, cooked soybeans that are fermented and leave to cool in banana leaves. So it's a firmer texture and it uh, basically looks like uh, this uh, white uh, nutty uh, candy bar. But if you cut it in small slices and maybe uh, put it a little bit smoky texture, maybe some uh, barbecue uh, sauce, you can make actually bacon out of tempeh. It, it's a really good option if you're looking to be a vegetarian. Next slide. Fats and spreads and mayonnaise. Of course, uh, cooking is a big part. Uh, you need the uh, oils or butter or something to uh, help uh, cook uh, anything you want. So I put here a small selection of uh, oils, avocado oil, because uh, it's uh, really good uh, tasteful. Coconut oil, because it has a higher uh, burn degree. So if you're using it to uh, cook, you should uh, think about cooking with uh, coconut oil instead of avocado, it's because uh, avocado oil is uh, more likely to burn your food than uh, cook it uh, nicely. Uh, uh, since coconuts have a higher cook, uh, temperature, I uh, insist you cook with that. Of course, you can do whatever you like. Our, uh, there are also a large ex uh, selection of uh, vegan products in the supermarket. You can make your own vegan mayonnaise, even uh, out of cashews. Cashews uh, are um, this uh, really popular uh, at the moment because uh, they can substitute most uh, of the meaty textures of uh, or meat uh, selections or uh, what's not in vegan basically you soak uh, cashews uh, in water you let them soak until they're soft and then you drain the water away then you blend it with uh, new cold water and then you strain it to make it more uh, smooth texture and then you have exactly mayonnaise there's also a lot of fake meats that, uh, or uh, you can call them fake meat products that are come into stores that uh, trying to imitate meat, but aren't really meat. They're uh, more specific to vegetarians and vegans to make them more like meat-like. So more people would uh, get into the vegan uh, idea and try to uh, eat more of healthy lifestyle. There are uh, growing trends, so people are really liking it at the moment. Uh, there are also a lot of uh, hot dogs, uh, meatball substitutes that uh, look and uh, almost taste like meat, but they're actually made of uh, made out of uh, vegan products. Uh, any uh, chickpeas, carrots, beetroot, uh, baklajans, uh, anything you can think out of, and it's growing uh, really fast. It's really popular in Estonia. I know that a lot of restaurants uh, are using uh, fake meat uh, in their menu and also trying to uh, sell it as uh, like meat, but actually a vegan version. And I would like to hear, uh, do you know any uh, fake meats in uh, your local areas? Maybe uh, Estonians can talk about their knowledge at the moment. Martor. Mm, yeah, can uh, Mart start? 
or clean. These are the certain names I can just recognize. Uh, what was the question? Do you know of any uh, meat like substitutes uh, that we use in Estonia, like uh, in restaurants? Oh no, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. What Maybe can somebody... I remind? It's only tofu. Yeah, tofu is uh, a real popular choice, but uh, it's expensive and it's uh, really really not uh, the product that uh, we can use in Estonia, but uh, there are a lot of like uh, substitutes. We can make our own like uh, tofu by uh, marinating uh, our own like uh, peas, basically, and then you let it uh, start fermenting. Fermenting is a uh, kind of a process that uh, makes the uh, sour uh, parts start affecting the peas and then it taste uh, kind of uh, overcome over time and then basically if you uh, ferment them uh, mush them in the mince meeting machine you can make your, your own uh, sort of uh, fake uh, tofu basically and there are also a lot of substitutes for uh, patties like in Estonia we can make uh, carrots and beets uh, because there's starch and potatoes and they hold up nicely and we can make our own patties out of them so yeah, that's one way to go. Does anybody in Finland know any meat substitutes that they're using in restaurants at the moment or even in schools? I know in Tartukahaka we've tried the, uh, yeah, some bit. I, I was, uh, remember we was uh, make some, some kind of uh, tofu, uh, not, not, I, I can, we was to do something with that and um, talking about i heard last year there was a pop up from the new that uh, in estonia they plan uh, to make like a meat substitute uh, in the, like a factory mm -hmm. is it is it so that uh, they have some factory going on in estonia i heard from the new last year basically, uh, basically we don't have a uh that sort of factor factor we have like a small in independent like uh, uh, maker like uh, you would imagine like a store that uh, makes their uh, basically uh, substitute for yeah, meat. And I, I heard that there was a company from America and uh, Estonia they, they was uh, tried to develop some some kind of uh, meat substitute so I, I that was a very interesting um, all those I, I don't really no except uh, you know meat and i saw in the market but i am not sure that uh, uh selling in the local um they have in finland so far um they have something for sale but i i need to take a look at that this is interesting thing i should take a look do they have a local sale for those uh, uh hot dog and then uh, yes yeah uh, I think a lot of like restaurants are trying to go uh, in a small direction of the plant based because it's uh, really a fantasizing uh, 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 new time and everybody's trying to make uh, something to everybody because uh, like uh, Janne or somebody uh, said in the session your restaurant is trying to market themselves in the direction of people but a lot of restaurants at the moment are trying to provide everybody with a small dose. Like if you are a meat lover, you, you're going to offer them a really meaty dish, but also you can't uh, leave by only selling meat because there are also restaurants that offer meat uh, near you. So you need to stand out. So a lot of restaurants are trying to make uh, a lot of selections. So you, you got vegans, you got meat lovers, you got a lot of, uh, like trying to provide to a lot of people, but they're not uh, specifically to one customer. And I think uh, since they're everybody trying to make their own like uh, different uh, vegan or plant-based uh, food, I think uh, every like bigger like restaurant and uh, fine dining restaurant in Finland is trying to make some sort of vegan or trying to make their own like specific vegan dish so yeah, I definitely recommend you looking at some nearby restaurants and uh, seeing what they have uh, in the vegan section of the menu. 
I, I remember I have a yellow, like a work, um, like a practice. I went to one restaurant. There was a doing, uh, uh, they make their uh, pasta and then they make a vegan uh, pasta sauce. It, it was very interesting. Yes, they had, they had some, they make a pasta sauce with the um, uh, Lindsay. Hey, what is that Lindsay? Lindsay. Lindsay, yes. And make the sauce as a pasta sauce with the Lindsay. And um, 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 what is it? No, they are in English. What is it? I cannot remember. Chickpea. Chickpea. They have Lindsay and chickpea and put that and, uh, uh, with the pasta. It was very good. Yes, yes, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, uh, like I discussed, uh, chickpeas are really good for protein. Uh, of course, uh, you need uh, a lot of uh, like proteins, fats, uh, like uh, vitamins in your vegan dish. So that's what uh, people are trying to uh, put together because uh, chickpeas have a high consistency in protein and they're also a really uh, good food. Uh, someone wrote something. Yes, I think the discussion went to the so-called lab uh, cultivated meat, but this is not wow. a vegetarian or vegan. This is still meat cells, but it is the meat is grown from cells in a laboratory condition. Yeah, so yeah. this is uh, this is a, an entirely new direction that uh, that uh, the culinary world is going. I do not know a lot about it, but I've read also some scientific news of it. You mean you mean the new pop up last year? What I was mentioned? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now I understand. Yes. I was wondering what they are uh, doing because I heard they pop up in the in Finnish new, and they say that uh, uh, the company in Estonia they uh, mm -hmm. try to make some kind of uh, uh, fried meat. Yeah, something like that. I wasn't yes. sure what is this about. Yeah. 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 So it's it is it is still meat. It's meat cells, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, killed by animals. It's like yeah. uh, grown in a laboratory, and it's not yeah. cruel to animals. Yeah. They're trying to outsource the like uh, harshness, which mm -hmm. is uh, really the main component why people go vegan or uh, vegetarian. So they're trying to uh, outsource the killing of the uh, animals and uh, since replacing killing with the uh, laboratory so they're basically making in a lab uh, the cells of meat and uh, making uh, it like uh, without killing animals so mm -hmm. you have your store meat without killing any animals mm -hmm. yeah and uh, and as far as i can find it, they are at the moment the, they are startups or pop-ups they are not um, big business yet so yes. you wouldn't find it on a regular menu anywhere. Yeah, they're still like FDA. Uh, FDA is basically like um, if you're trying to put your own product to sell, FDA is the people that check if there are no bacteria that uh, cause you harm or uh, affect the, the person's like digestive uh, systems or anything like that. Uh, yeah, they're trying their uh, best, uh, but it could be still like a couple of years since uh, it takes time to develop something that uh, basically has no uh, sunlight, doesn't feed, it's just uh, grown in a laboratory and made into a meat like it's, you can't really call it meat, but it's like meaty, meaty. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a more popular choice. I think if uh, people like to be vegetarian, they like uh, meat, then they're going to pick that choice because uh, there was no harming in animals if in any way. And <clears throat> of course, uh, back to the more plant based diets, uh, it is a trend uh, that people are like uh, trying to make their uh, foods more like um, similar to meat uh, because the fake uh, interest interest because uh, the thirst is yeah, industrial. Yeah, industri uh, industrial. Uh, and it's like really important to people to see you can make uh, plant-based even look like uh, real meat. And of course, 
people are start, starting that way to becoming more and more and more uh, vegan and vegetarians and uh, it's like hooking them basically and that's what i'm trying to say basically does anybody have any questions after that uh, long presentation or short however you take it I Does see anybody... Janne's comment to that the broad beans, yeah, yeah. for us bulldoba, bulldoba. Uh, is is becoming popular in fi Finland as a meat substitute. So this is interesting. I haven't heard uh, it used in Estonia yet, but yeah, as it is mean, bean, it it should work. Yeah, I mean a lot of uh, vegetarians uh, restaurants are uh, trying to use like local like we've uh, discussed in uh, the last sessions it's more important to everybody that uh, we use local and uh, like homegrown ingredients that have no like uh, bacteria on them or uh, have any uh, uh, supplements to their growth so they don't grow bigger than they are supposed to and that affects your organism and that affects your uh, system and more in restaurants are uh, looking for uh, how to make their own products with uh, special uh, local foods like um, let's take uh, the carrot the most uh, we, I think carrot is everywhere it's the most common like uh, ingredient with potato they are local but you can make so many things out of potato that are vegetarians or uh, vegan you can make basically any food because a lot of people only use like only the carrot but you can make a carrot uh, stock with the carrot uh, peels. It's uh, really important to us in Estonia to try to make uh, uh, every restaurant with uh, no face and make more uh, foods like plant-based. Uh, at the moment, uh, Estonia has uh, in the real restaurants have about 15% uh, uh, plant-based in their menu. I would like uh, the Finland and uh, any other country that's in at the moment uh, to look uh, this uh, up after uh, the session, how many uh, uh, restaurants, let's say you look up uh, five restaurants and see how many of them ha have an offering on plant-based or vegan selection on their menu, because uh, in Europe I know they're trying to make uh, a bigger selection of uh, plant-based foods uh, available on the menu especially since it's a growing trend and people are uh, really looking forward of uh, trying uh, different like uh, foods that are uh, vegetarians or vegans. Does anybody have any questions? No? Nobody wants to ask anything. Okay. I'll talk a little bit uh, about the pop-up event and uh, how to sub uh, substitute your uh, uh, menus with uh, your uh, special uh, ingredients from uh, uh, basically your local sectors. If you're uh, trying to get a lot of protein, you should look for uh, foods that have uh, been uh, uh, grown uh, locally, of course. And then uh, for Estonian example, and uh, Finnish too, because we have the same climate. There's uh, a lot of uh, things that are similar to us. If you're trying to get uh, a lot of protein or iron, you should uh, go for uh, vegetables that uh, look green or uh, are uh, really uh, like green or uh, really, um, how do I say the word in English? Uh, basically, you need to look for foods that uh, are uh, green or full of uh, nutrients, and that's basically all vegetables. And now I'm gonna show you. Um, you mean that uh, for us we can use uh, like uh, in the spring they have one plant uh, called stinky nettle. That nettle, that leaf, is is high in iron. You see, so that the one that grow in the in the garden that uh, when we touch them they get pain little pain we can use those kind of plant you mean yes exactly oh, okay oh, uh, yes uh, it's also in uh, estonia it's um i don't know the word for it um, i think it's a nettle the sting sting stinky nettle nettle i think it's just something like that pronoun like that stinks nettle nettle something like that 
Yeah. I'm not good as a pronounce English. Yes. It sounds like that. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's a since it's uh, becoming the spring, there are a lot of uh, foods that uh, are starting to grow. And since uh, the best time to harvest food is when it's uh, just starting to grow and it's uh, full of nutrients uh, that have uh, been in the uh, soil and the soil gives the food a good uh, like uh, texture and uh, good uh, vitamins, it's important to know how to treat your uh, food since uh, a lot of vegetables uh, are really um, Uh, like soft and uh, they can be easily like overcooked or uh, their vitamins can be easily like uh, cooked out of it. For example, if you're boiling, boiling something, you need to take care that you don't boil the vitamins out of the uh, uh, vegetables because uh, water is uh, uh, one of the those uh, uh, ingredients that takes vitamins and minerals out of your ingredients because uh, like oils and water have a texture that uh, or like um, it's a liquid that takes uh, vitamins and minerals. For example, if you uh, put a beetroot in uh, water or carrot into water or uh, uh, potato into water, what does it do? From For potato, it takes out the starch. It uh, literally starts to bring out starchy uh, potato. It takes it takes. And same is with oil. If you put uh, like meat in marinade, the oil always uh, like takes uh, the texture, uh, the taste a little bit into it. So those are uh, kind of uh, examples. You don't want to overcook your vegetables. Be careful with the vegetables that you cook and uh, boil and uh, make. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, could you please explain again? I, I, am not, not quite understood what you're talking about. Um, the meat and the oil marinade. Uh, uh sorry, sorry. Yeah, Try to no, explain well, that again. My English is uh, not the best, also. So, uh, basically, uh, oil takes, uh, like, um, how do I say it in English? If you marinate something, let's just yes. say, example, you want to marinate whatever you want. You put the rosemary in, uh, you put the meat or vegetable in it with it. Oil is also, uh, it, 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 I suppose. Um, mm. You mean the, the oil will be uh, more flavor than other flavor? I, I it takes know. flavor, yes, but uh, it also takes a little bit uh, uh, nutrients because uh, the oil is, uh, when you press uh, olives, you get the uh, cold press olive oil, and that's uh, basically, uh, you know, you can't cook it because it will start burning. It has a oh, okay. low uh, temperature temperature point. And if you have uh, a, rap, a rape seed oil or a sesame seed oil or something like that, it uh, always uh, takes some of the ingredient that you're marinating or uh, uh, frying, it takes some and it leaves some. Basically, okay. Yes. Yes. Now I understand. So it means that uh, if we put some oil, depend on what the oil. If there are, um, for example, put olive, that will be easily to get burned and lost the flavor because of the oil yeah. will be make easily to get burned. Yeah. Did I understood correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry if my English is not the No. Best. No. No. Don't be sorry. You are fine. You are good. Okay. Okay. So it's good uh, that you're thinking uh, along with me because I would be having trouble on my alone uh, uh, explaining something and if uh, any other uh, students have any questions, feel free. I'll try to explain my best uh, how something works. Uh, if you have any questions about the menu, ask me, no problem. At the moment, uh, I've uh, talked uh, a lot about the first uh, subjects. Uh, I'll uh, try to explain a little bit more to you about uh, uh, plant-based and uh, what it's m meaning and uh, why is it important at the moment uh, that uh, more people are uh, uh, eating it and uh, trying to uh, go with the meat uh, uh, in, in vegetables instead of meat and uh, it's uh, most of uh, your system when you're 
eating meat, it takes longer to digest. So basically, if you eat vegetables, it's easier for your stomach to take the vitamins and uh, ex ex absorb uh, vegetables. After uh, eating meat, it takes longer because uh, meat texture is uh, more uh, like firm. There are more layers and the uh, meat is uh, like your skin. It's, uh, you know, elasticity. It uh, takes more time to ingest. And uh, a lot of vegetables uh, give you more vitamins than uh, meat because uh, meat is uh, full of bacteria. The vegetables are only filled with uh, vitamins and uh, nutrition. So if you start eating more meat, uh, you'll basically becoming the risk of having heart disease and having uh, basically high cholesterol because uh, meats have a, a higher fat content than uh, vegetables. Uh, you can uh, improve your health if you eat uh, vegetables because uh, vitamins uh, make your orgasm, uh, orga uh, organism uh, more stronger and it uh, helps uh, you with uh, any viruses that may come your way. It will help uh, your system stay stronger. Uh, that's the main uh, positives of being vegetarians or vegans or uh, any of the other we've talked about. I'll uh, let you know if uh, I come up with any new uh, ideas. At the moment, uh, I think I'm good with the first segment. Is it okay if we take a break uh, now and uh, meet in 30 minutes? Is anybody against that? Yes, I'm okay. Yeah, I think it's good. Okay, then 1220, we'll be back. <laughs> 